I'm going to say a few words about uh, SDG 8, which is entitled Decent Work and Economic Growth. And this uh, SDG is concerned with the promotion of inclusive and sustainable economic growth, employment and decent work for all. Now one basic question here is actually what is work? What do we mean by work? And there are quite a lot of different ways of thinking about work. I mean, the most obvious perhaps is in terms of jobs, uh, employment, different kinds of labour, mental, manual, what you might call the expending of energy and effort, um, producing and creating something new, whether it's a material product or something more immaterial like knowledge, uh, even perhaps doing what one would choose not to do could be seen as work. But having said that, there is a very important uh, additional comment to make that work isn't only about employment, it's also about what we might call unpaid domestic and care work. It includes raising children, care for the sick and elderly, and caring for other people in the household and so on. Work includes all and many different kinds of work. It includes unpaid work, domestic work, care work. And also I'll mention that unemployment also involves work. I mean, being unemployed can involve a lot of hard work of survival and also it can involve work dealing with, say, government and state agencies and so on. So just to move on now to the, a second important area, what we mean by decent work. Now, decent work has got some very obvious meanings. It means abolishing what I might call non-decent work, slavery, trafficking, clear exploitation, sweatshops, child labour, and similar, similar things. But it also, I think it also relates to some very unsafe working conditions and trying to limit and control that. I mean, in, in fishing industry, mining, building. And also it relates to very long hours spent in work. And this also applies again to much unpaid or care work. Just a word about economic growth, which is the other theme in this SDG. Uh, to perhaps repeat the obvious, this refers to sustainable economic growth, not just any old economic growth. It's important to mention also that there are many different ways of measuring economy and economic growth in terms of uh, total and per capita GDP or GNI, earned and unearned income, and again, unpaid labour. And this also affects, in a sense, how one thinks about the economy and economic growth, how one measures it. And also, an important additional point to make is that economic growth is in itself no guarantee of decent work. It's quite possible to have economic growth, but also to actually have, as I've mentioned briefly, uh, increases in inequality and exploitation and uh, you could say in some cases decreases in decent work. Decent work has during the last decades become a universal objective and has been included in major human rights declarations and UN resolutions and is now included in Goal 8 of the UN's agenda. 2030 for sustainable development. Decent work sums up the aspirations of people in their working lives. It involves opportunities for work that is productive and delivers a fair income, security in the workplace and social protection for families, better prospects for personal development and social integration, freedom for people to express their concerns, organize and participate in the decisions that affect their lives and equality of opportunity and treatment for all women and men. The International Labour Organization, ILO, with its 187 member states globally, has since the late 1990s developed a decent work agenda for the community of work, looking at job creation, rights at work, social protection, and social dialogue with gender equality as a cross-cutting objective. The basis for this decent work agenda is formed by the international labor standards set out by the ILO in the form of conventions and recommendations which define 
the minimum standard for decent work. In 1998, the ILO adopted the Declaration on Fundamental Principle and Principles and Rights at Work, which declared that all member states, even if they have not ratified the conventions in question, have an obligation arising from the very fact of membership in the ILO to respect, to promote and to realize the principles concerning the fundamental rights regarding first the elimination of all forms of forced or compulsory labor, the effective abolition of child labor, the elimination of all forms of discrimination in respect of employment and occupation and freedom of association and the effective recognition of the right to collective bargaining. Results have also been achieved. The ILO estimates that the total number of girls and boys in child labor dropped from 246 million in 2000 to 152 million in the year 2017. The promotion of international labor standards is not only a task for the ILO and the member states. Business corporations can include their commitment to these standards in their corporate social responsibility standards and include follow-up and control measures in this regard. Non-governmental organizations are in many ways promoting these standards, among other things, by including them as conditions for the labeling of fair trade products. Only through a broad spectrum of measures real progress can be achieved. Now we return to discuss sustainable economic growth and also how that relates to decent work in our times in post-industrial societies. In these societies where overwork is a threat to people's well-being and also for sustainable economic growth. Even if corporate goals often mean profits and market shares on both short term and long term, in order to keep people healthy and more profitable for organizations too, we need to think a bit differently. This also relates to new ways of being employed or not, as in the gig economy where much of the work is made increasingly precarious. This is where social sustainability comes in. Social sustainability can be defined as a quality of societies or the relation between production and reproduction in our societies. In working life, this would mean taking into consideration the care responsibilities an individual might have during different times in his or her life. And more often, the care responsibilities do affect women's lives and work, working lives more. The point is, from a societal perspective, to better include both for, formal paid work and informal unpaid care work into measurements of both productivity and growth. This is central to sustainable development in terms of production and reproduction. And, well, now let's move on to human sustainability. Human sustainability is defined as the design of work and its aims in such ways that it ensures the individual employee's ability to work according to their own values and maintaining the ability to work until retirement age. This is very important in the post-industrial times where neoliberal ethos stresses the need for both high levels of professionalism, performance and flexibility, but often on corporate terms. Uh, knowledge intense work has become increasingly scattered and due to the technological developments, time and place fade out, work is done from wherever and whenever. High availability is often expected and over time does become invisible. This leads to new kinds of problems in the kind of work that is physically safe and economically relatively secure. Overwork leads to ill-being and even burnout, causing human suffering but also decreased organizational productivity. And thinking more from a macro perspective, as so many now suffer from burnouts, that might lead to permanent changes in people's ability to work, if at all, at least not as much as prior to the burnout. This can also have societal consequences for not only healthcare costs, but also for decreased productivity. Ideas of uh, social and human sustainability of working life contest the present capitalist and neoliberal focus on financial outcomes, as well as the emphasis on individual responsibility over well-being that fades out the pressures from both strong corporate cultures and dominant societal values. 
However, we want to bring these ideas and concepts to the discussion as parts of sustainability, decent work and sustainable economic growth. And just to make some final words on economic growth and sustainable economic growth, a, a number of questions one might discuss and think about. How does decent work in one part of the world depend upon non-decent work or less decent work elsewhere in the world? How does decent work in one part of the paid economy depend upon non-decent work in another part of the economy and the unpaid sector? One might also think about how does economic growth and sustainable economic growth connect with and depend on other forms of sustainability, environmental, social, cultural. And then two final questions. Um, how in the longer term uh, economic growth, how is it possible at the societal level in a way that is compatible with what you might call shorter term pursuit of economic growth at the corporate or business level. And finally, how is what one might call severe or absolutely blatant exploitation of labour to be distinguished or separated from the more routine pursuit of profit in capitalism and business?